Hi! Yes, this is a very early stream. I, I don't normally... I'm not the one who normally streams on Thursday. Um, so this is gonna be a very short stream. Um, so... Today is American Thanksgiving. Um... And I wanted to hang out with the people I like. Um... So today is not a very structured stream. Um, it's not going to be a very, uh, it's not going to be a very, like, mega active, you know, thing. Um, we're just, we're just going to hang out. Um, I, I have some cards, you know, I don't, I didn't really want to make it, like, too, too, like, organized. Like, I have to do this, this, and this. Because I've had enough of that this <laughs> week. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna just, uh, just chill out and talk with you guys, see how you guys are doing. Um, you already had some Thanksgiving dinner? It's a bit early for that. No, no, we don't have, we don't have, unfortunately, 18 hours, Rye. We only have two, so we're not gonna do Radu's wheel. Uh, <laughs> Also, I have not cleaned my, my reading space, so <laughs> we are we are definitely not gonna do Radu's wheel. Um first one. Normally there's just the one. Um I mean, Porku, you're you're like a few time zones ahead of us. You're across the ocean. So it's at least Eight nine over there. Um, for Nedge, it's about three p.m. right now. So that's why I was like, "Oh, dinner?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um. So, right again, like you're reading the whole deck. I've, I've talked to you through this a couple of times now. Um, like, you use every single card in your deck. And they all are assigned to different sections of the spread. So they have different contexts depending on where they're placed. So you have to individually read every card of the deck in the context of the quadrant that they've been placed in. You know? So it's a... It's a full day project. Like, I've never done it, and it's not because I don't want to. It's because I don't have the willpower to do a full, like, 12 hour reading. Um, so, over here, usually dinner falls anywhere between, and it, it, we're very wide on this, anywhere between, like, 5 and 10. So, and, and 5 is still quite early. Normally, like, 6 and 10 is more, like, around where most people eat dinner. I'm probably going to be eating dinner at about 6.30 or, or something like that. Um, let me, let me bring this into here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be eating dinner at, like, 6.30, maybe 7, you know, something like that. Like, that's, that's kind of standard for us. Um. 3 is very early. <laughs> At least in my books. I, I don't know for sure. Everybody's okay. Oh, they finished cooking early. Okay. See, the turkey normally takes a very long time, so that's the only reason why I was like, whoa, whoa, how? How? What? <laughs> um, yeah, you'll, you'll survive. You'll you know, you've given yourself a bit to digest. Then you then you pick out the things you like and, and eat until you're satisfied and then you're good. This that's that's Thanksgiving. And then you then you take a big ol' Yeah, yeah. Um I actually had these at my debut. I thought since it is technically a holiday, even though it's a very localized one, I would 
do a little little extra decor. Um, but yeah, um, I have my deck with me. If anybody would like a uh, a reading, um, I have I have them. Um, and I guess I'm just kind of here to to vibe until then. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna be honest with you all. I'm not a really big Thanksgiving person. I am a very very picky eater. Um. And most of the things that are for Thanksgiving are not really in my, not really in my wheelhouse of things that I enjoy. I like turkey, I like gravy, and I like bread, and that's it. I'm thankful for a lot of things this year, I, I see you, I see you fishing for a compliment. <laughs> um, no, but... Uh, my my roasting aside, I am very thankful for you all. Um, I'm thankful for every opportunity that's been placed before me this year. Uh, if you would have asked me that the same time last year, I might have not been able to answer you. I uh, I just I, I guess at times like this, I, I like to take a minute to look back and be like, "Wow, I fucking I lived, bitch." You know, like <laughs> I uh. Around this time last year, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it another year. You know, I wasn't. I wasn't sure if that was that was in the cards. And uh, here I am, here in witchier than ever. Um. <laughs> so I'm. Uh, I'm thankful. Honestly, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful that I've had you know this this time to to work on something creative. I'm, I'm grateful that all of you come to spend significant portions of your day with me. Like, okay, I know I've said this before. I know you've heard this spiel from me before, but I'm going to do it again. Like, I know I know. as a streamer, I have to worry about, um, you know, eventually I'm going to have relationships you could call parasocial, where, like, I don't really know a lot about the people who are coming in, and they know a lot about me. But I I feel like while it is important to acknowledge that, I also think it's important to acknowledge that, like, we're spending, like, four hours out of our day together. Multiple times a week. That's, like, a friendship. That's, like, what people who actually hang out do. So, like, <laughs> like I, I realize that there's a balance to strike there, but I, I want to, I want to say that I am grateful that through this, I feel like I have made, I've made a lot of friends, you know? I, I feel very, like, I, I feel very close to you guys, even if I don't necessarily know everything about you guys, like. Who knows everything about their their real life friends anyway? Like, there's only a couple people in your life that you feel like you could probably say you know like a ton about, you know. Oh, that's okay. Food is food is good anywhere. Uh, let's see. One sec. Beep beep beep. Oh my god. Yum. Oh my god, that looks so yummy! Oh, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Maybe we should make a food channel. I don't know if, like, I don't know if we need, like, a ton right now, but, like, honestly, I want, I want you guys to show me food more often. Oh, but that, that could be dangerous. That could be dangerous. I could get too hungry. <laughs> Um, let's see. So, I guess, I guess to, to start out with the readings, I suppose, uh, let me get out my, let me get out my deck and do a little bit of, I'll, I'll hit you guys with the 
ASMR question mark shuffling? I don't I don't think it's very relaxing sound, but I, some people might be into it. Alexa, please. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa. App. Why does she always have trouble connecting to the internet? My computer does fine. My phone does fine. Why is she specifically having a hard time always? I might move her somewhere else in the room. But I'm so lazy. I don't know. Um Oh my god. I want to I want to try Monica wine. That sounds amazing. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad you are I'm glad you are, are grateful, right? <laughs> Let's see. What am I going to read for first? What am I going to read for? Um, ba 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 ba. Da da da. Go tell Potato you're thankful to him. Let him know. <laughs> I believe in I believe in giving credit where it's due. Huh. Um, what do I want to read for? Does anybody have any um any inquiries, any any things you would like to to consult the cards on? Any 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 new tabletop characters you want to flesh out? Any? <sighs> Honestly, as long as it's in TOS, anything. <laughs> Uh, as long as it as long as it is TOS, oh, anything is good. I won't I won't be doing extremely raunchy tarot readings. I know uh, there's a hello, Damien. Welcome in. I have I have tarot cards. I'm trying to figure out what to read. A reading uh, on the Magus of the Moat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's much that the Magus of the Moat is going to be facing in the future, but I, I'll pull a card for it. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, this is a card that speaks of fate that is outside of the hands of the Querent. Um, which is fitting, considering that it is a Magic the Gathering card that you drew. Um... Porku, to give you context, uh, a couple Tuesday we had a, a Magic the Gathering stream where we were learning and, and playing Commander, some of us for the first time, and uh, Rai had a card, Magus of the Moat, that made it impossible for anything to attack for a while until it was dealt with. Um, I feel like the deck has just looked at me square in the face and said, card games are based on chance. And it says, just, you know, you don't say, tarot deck, card games are based on chance. That's, that is in fact a, a, a thing that is true. That is in fact, damn, wow. <laughs> I'm debating on whether I want to have open voice for this. I'm like, on one hand, I'm kind of enjoying the, like, the chill vibes, and, like, I know you guys will also be chill, but, like, you know, just, like, low-key hanging out. Um, but I, I suppose we could do open voice. Um, how fortunate that I got that card early. Yeah, honestly, fortunate for me. Zix would have just trampled over me and left me in the dust. And I got to I got to instead live until I could uh 
fully assemble the bomb and light the fuse and then counter terrorists won right before I could set it off. <laughs> please, please don't, please no shilling on my, please no shilling on my open voice. Hello, Zix. Hope you're having a wonderful day. It's, it's American Thanksgiving, so I am, I'm being a, a big sappy nerd and also there's tarot cards. <laughs> um. So, I don't know. What else? What else? Um, let me let me do some more shuffling. Uh, if anybody has any any queries, any any vibes, if anybody just wants to draw a card and see what it says, I am uh, I am doing these for free today. You don't have to pay points. Um, got a drink playing cards. Ooh! Sounds good. Sounds good. Are you gonna be streaming later? I was gonna raid you. Uh, okay, hold on. Ahem, ahem. <laughs> I assume you want a serious out of it. <laughs> let, me, let me clear the gremlins out of my throat. <clears> throat> ah, da. <laughs> Oh god, that one was garbage. No, no, we could do better. We could do better. Mm. Hold on, I have to I have to imagine the Ojo Sama laugh for a moment. Hada -da. There we go. Better. It came a little bit from deeper within me. That's what she said. Um it is in a hundred minutes. You have time. You have time. I just, I wanted to be, were you literally out in the streets being like, subscribe to Loon? <laughs> oh my God, please don't. At least, if you're gonna if you're gonna advertise me on the literal streets, get a poster board, write my name on it, and just stick it somewhere. You will probably get prosecuted for it, but you know, people will know how to spell my name. <laughs> I don't know if I would get prosecuted for it, so maybe don't do that. But you know, if they're everywhere, they can't possibly catch me. Look, you don't have to just advertise Twitch Prime. I don't need Bezos getting more money. Well, you know, either way, Bezos is getting more money if you subscribe to me, so. Damn. I live in a system I, I hate. Um. <laughs> I truly do, don't I? I've, I've created a... Uh, I, I live in a trap of my own creation. Ugh. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know. What am I going to draw for today? I'm going to draw for me. Okay. Um, that is... Da -da -da -da. Hang on. I'm drawing for me first. Because I don't do that much. Uh, today is a me day, I suppose. Oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. Take your money from Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos! <laughs> I was- I, I had to look up this card. And I feel a little bit- I feel a little bit called out. The daughter of swords is a young woman whose honesty and insights take her far in life. People truly value her frankness. She learns from keen observation. It almost seems as though she never stops watching. Sometimes this becomes a burden for her as she can't help noticing this or that small detail that could have been done better. There's a potential for her to hold on to those experiences and become spiteful and judgmental. You know, <laughs> shut up, tarot deck. Shut up. <laughs> Always watching Wazowski. And then I have drawn the Six of Cups. 
which is the nostalgia card. I, I, I like me some nostalgia. And then I drew the hanged man, which makes sense. I can't fucking drive. <laughs> You've been procrastinating for the last few days and you don't know what to do. Would you like to... Would you also like to consult the deck about what you should do? I will... I will potentially draw it for, for your... Okay. You do like some nostalgia. In fact... <laughs> everybody, if you... <laughs> If you also like nostalgia, go follow Unfeeling Rug. He does he does a show called Nostalgia Trip where he goes and, and plays old games from his childhood. We were both children of the GameCube era, so I really and truly like adore your show. I think it is I think it is perfect. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. Let's draw three cards for Porky. Do, 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 do. I didn't shuffle these enough. I drew Daughter of Swords again. I'm gonna draw you another card. That's the Seven of Cups again. What the fuck? Okay. I didn't shuffle enough. We're gonna, we're gonna redraw. Hang on. Ah, ba, ba, ba. I mean, I guess, I guess if the Daughter of Swords is me, then it's saying you're hanging out on my stream and that's what you're doing. <laughs> I guess. Little purple lunchbox. Oh my god. Big, big fucking mood. Okay. Ah. Okay. So... Let me make sure I have this one correct. Hold on. Ace of Wands, Ace of Wands, Ace of Wands. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry, Porky. My cards are telling me you need to get work done. <laughs> um, the Emperor is a card of, uh, of, of discipline. Uh, it's, it's a card of structure. Um, it's saying you've got some shit you need to get done and you're gonna need to crack down on yourself. However, on a more optimistic side, the Ace of Wands de uh, denotes a new idea or inspiration that if you do crack down, you're going to be struck by motivation that you didn't have before. And last but not least, the Nine of Wands, a final optimistic note, and probably if, if this is if this is university related, very uh very uh topical, um the nine of wands denotes that you are almost at the end of your journey. You're you're getting close to break is is at least I, I don't know I I don't know if your breaks are similar to ours in the States, but uh usually semesters tend to be near their end around this time. Uh you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be okay, but it's saying you're, you're gonna need to push yourself a little further, but it's gonna go well. Uh, how well tonight's Fire Emblem will treat us? Ooh, is anybody gonna die? Let's see if anybody's gonna die. One, two, three. Ooh, somebody might die. Um, okay, I've, gr I've drawn a lot of swords. This is tasty. Um, the, okay, I want to make sure I have this one correct. Do, 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 do. Uh, okay. Uh, the Hierophant is, uh, your understandings of, like, traditional learning. Um, usually a teacher or a mentor. Um, somebody that you, you would, you would go to for guidance. The Five of Swords is a card of self-destruction. It's, it's harm brought upon not by an external force, but by your own acts. And this, and the Two of Swords is a stalemate that you can't break out of. Um, 
Damien, I'm really sorry. Someone's gonna die, and it might be Titania. <laughs> um... <laughs> This is the worst timeline. I'm so sorry. I drew the most the most pessimistic fucking cards. <laughs> Lessons end in December and then it's exam period. Oh. Wait, you have exams for like two to three months? That's fucking nuts. Whoa. Whoa. No, no, Damien, never say that. These games, these games, Fire Emblem, you're supposed to get attached. It's like, okay, so you know in Pokemon Nuzlocke, you're supposed to name them specifically because then you get attached? Yeah, Fire Emblem is like that, but like a thousand percent worse. Because everybody has carefully crafted backstories and interlocking, like, social bonds. It is not your fault for getting attached. You're supposed to get attached. Get get more attached. Cry. <laughs> That's what the game is about. Um we have a few classes each semester. It's not like ten a semester, it's more like four. Well yeah. Uh that's similar to how it is out here. Um now you can load up your you can load up your course load and take a ton of semester, but like yeah, like, four to six is usually what the college load looks like. Ten is more like your high school, because, like, they don't space things out in a way to treat you like a human. They treat you like a factory worker and just expect you to rote work all day. Um, I don't like the public school system. Can you tell? Uh, <laughs> but, uh... But, yeah. Um, it'll be... It'll be It'll be doable. I think the cards are just saying, like, hey, like, time, it might be time to start, like, thinking about what your, what your work is gonna look like in, in the coming months. It is! It is! That's the point! Exactly! Yes. Like, the message of Fire Emblem is is that like war has real ass consequences. Like and and two, like both on a macro and a micro level. Like yo. I mean that is fair if you have a plan in mind for where you're gonna go in terms of looking for a job. Um I would say keep in it until you have a path laid out for you but once you do yeah you know it's 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 not my uh it's not my business to tell you where to go you know yeah yeah <laughs> i need a quote bot in this chat i, I Yeah. That's, that's, that's what the game wants from you. Get attached. Cry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh <sighs> Uh, does anybody else want to? Does anybody else want anything red? Uh, I'm I'm just kind of vibing until it's time for Zix's stream, but I I figure, you know. Should we all start a game of? Oh, not not today. I'm so sorry. We don't have seven hours. Um. I'm so I'm so sorry. We don't have that time. <laughs> but, um, we've talked about this in the Discord a little bit. Um. Perhaps in a future tabletop sim day. Uh, I am, I am very, yes! Oh my god, okay. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to spoil too much because Damien has not played through, uh, these games, but I have told him at length that the love interest is Soren. 
The love interest is soaring. <laughs> I will not be dissuaded from this point. <laughs> also, yes, Ike is best boy. I love Ike so much. Okay, so like, Smash Bros. Ike is like, I fight for my friends and that's his only personality trait. But really, Ike's only personality trait is that he works really hard. <laughs> Ike's personality trait is he is so committed to his, like his his work and his job that that's his whole identity. <laughs> he is he's amazing with the sword because all he does is sword. <laughs> and and whenever he has free time, he is training the sword. You know, like that's that's it. That's that's oh my god. Yes! Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's just a cool, respectful dude. He's very professional. I I love- okay, minor, minor spoiler. Damien, cover your ears. Minor, minor spoiler. I love that, like, his whole interaction with the princess is, like, the princess slowly being like, Wow, Ike is so cool. Do you think maybe we could hold hands? And then and then Ike being like, Ma'am, we're we're very concerned about your safety. We're going to guide you over the border. I, I don't understand why you're looking at me like that. Um you know I, I'm I'm just here doing my job. Uh and I will tell I will tell I will tell Damien it is safe. Like, yeah, you hired me. <laughs> and it's <laughs> Like, it's not that he has no emotional connection to her, but he, like, there's definitely a different set of expectations on either side of this equation. <laughs> oh, Boyden Brothers, yes! <laughs> okay, like, I love those three so damn much. Oh. God. I love that Oscar and the other guy have, like, a, a rivalry that is also very one-sided. Like, the one guy is like, I will crush you, you know, you're you're my rival, we, we fight all the time. And Oscar's just like, oh, hey, you? I know who you are. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop spoiling things. Damien, it's safe. Come back. I can't believe he's dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh. There's I'm gonna be real, there's a lot of there's a lot of most likely to be wife guy in this in this game. If we're if we're if we're making it a gender-neutral wife guy, it's probably Soren as well. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> There's a lot of wife guys in this game. <laughs> but yeah, that's my that's my vibe check for for Fire Emblem. Is I ship it. That's it. I ship it. <laughs> I, I, you know, like, everybody's like, oh, Awakening is the game that's all about shipping. No, it's- this franchise has always been like that. This franchise has literally always been like that. Um, hmm. Anybody got any fucking D and D characters? I want to read for a D and D character. Submit to me, your children. Let me tell you what their future holds. Awakening is for the super soldier breeding program. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Damien, you are correct, and you should. <laughs> <laughs> no! 
Would you still like a rating for your character? Oh no, I'm gonna sneeze. Lunate scrimp. Excuse me. Mm. Thank you, toast. Oh my god. Six months. Half a year of toast. That's a lot of toast. Uh, let's see. Crag, Vanilla, and Nerolin. Hold on. I, okay. I will do three cards, one for each of them, okay? Uh, I will do them in the order that you have listed them. And I will try to read the three together as a party composition. Okay. Do, 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 do. Also, let me know if I've if I've butchered any pronunciations there. Um, okay. Uh everybody's doing great except for Craig. I don't know what the deal is with Craig, but uh Craig is facing the three of swords which is a card of heartbreak and betrayal. Um, Craig might be doing fine internally now. If, he's, if he is, he should watch the fuck out. Something's coming. If he isn't, then, like, this card is just saying, like, big mood. Like, yeah, you're not, you're not doing great. I'm so sorry. Um, Fenella is learning to value her friends. Or their friends. I don't know. I don't know this character. Um, this is the, the card of Three of Cups. Um, which is the card of, like, the people that you hold dearest in your life. Not because of familial bond or alliance, but just because you like them. And, um, Merlin? Merlin? I don't know. Uh, has gotten the Son of Pentacles. I need to actually look this one up because I do not know it by heart. I usually don't know the people cards by heart. Um, loyal, quiet, and dedicated. Um, someone very inventive. Um, that they, they can trust wholeheartedly. Um, but sometimes they're stubborn and persistent to a fault. I do not know if this card describes the character or someone that they know. But this is a significant figure in their, like... In their future or in their present. Um, if it describes them, these traits are going to be what is important to how... Like, the, the crossroads of their fate. Like, what, which way they will go is going to be determined by these traits. If it describes somebody else that they know, they should be paying attention to this person. Because something important is going to happen with this person... That's gonna shake their life. And that is your is your three uh your three characters individually. If I were to try to put these all together, if I were to read these all as just like things that are gonna happen to the group, this is actually very standard D and D fare. Something bad is going to happen that they're going to survive because they stick together. Um, you know, Three of Swords can describe a lot of shit that happens in D&D. &D. Getting ambushed by bandits on the road is, is the Three of Swords, you know? But you, you survive because you are, you are there with the people that you trust who are stubborn enough to kill these fucking bandits. <laughs> um... And you're, you, you forge bonds with these people through, you know, surviving these, these horrible events. This, this was a very D&D &D poll. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what I have drawn for them. Hopefully it, uh, hopefully it goes well for them, Damien. <laughs> uh, did I have anything else that was up there? Hold on. Ba -ba -ba -ba. They've been played for six months. I mean, I understand. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of campaigns go the way of that. Um, I don't want to get into that too much, though. Honestly, I uh, yeah, um, yeah. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Anybody else? Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it. Miss Clover? Hang on. Let me do a, a three card for Miss Clover. Boo. I might do a reading for my paladin as well. I don't want to, I don't want to speak, if I do one for my own character, I'm probably not going to speak too in depth because I'm, I am constantly at risk of spoiling things. I have no filter. I have no desire to keep secrets, but I have so many ideas, you know? <laughs> uh, two, three... Okay. Um. So. This definitely tells a sequential story, in my opinion. Um. Actually, it might not. It might just be like. It might just be like a, a current situation deal. Um. So. I guess, I guess this reading is going to prompt me to talk about what I know about your backstory. Not, not, not like the deep stuff that I know probably is not revealed at the table, but, um, you wanted to be an adventurer, but you couldn't due to, due to constraints. Uh, the Son of Swords is a charming and adventurous type. Uh, who, who is, who is moving forward with his ideals and dreams. Um... He might not necessarily be somebody you can completely trust, but he is someone who uh, definitely will get you moving forward. The Hanged Man is those constraints that have brought you to rely on the Son of Swords. Um, the Hanged Man is a card of forced inaction, but it's a card that tells you to remember the things that you learned while you're inactive. There are things that you can only learn when you are not the, like the party that is that is creating change you know um and ned you're in luck i'm talking about clover at the moment so if you would like i can go through some of the others um and the last card i've drawn is the high priestess which is a beautiful card for a paladin um it's saying she should keep following that inner voice that is pulling her to adventure the High Priestess is very much a card of intuition. It's not learning from the head. It's not learning from experience. It's just learning from your gut. You've got this thing that you really want to do. You've got this calling in your heart. It's saying, go for it. Your time is now. Um, Nedge, would you like me to do for individual characters, or would you like me to do just a general three card? The, the latter will take less time, but I'm willing to do whatever, because we have an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, what the fuck? This is just your backstory. Okay, general three card. Okay. Do, 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 do. We're gonna, we're gonna shuffle. Um... Head empty, heart full. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Already I know what this means. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just make sure I have the... Okay. So, <laughs> if I remember right, Nedge, this is a charisma party, kind of, isn't it? Um, this is all a bunch of very attractive people walking around doing chaotic things. But the Father of Wands is a very charismatic and creative person. Um, he's very compassionate, but he's also just fucking wild with his ideas. 
This is your Sunday game, Zix. Yes, this is a three-card reading for the party as a whole. Um, what this what this uh, reading is telling me? I've drawn the Father of Swords, the Two of Pentacles, and the Ace of Wands. You have a lot of ideas, an abundance of wands. You have a lot of different ideas and epiphanies bouncing around. New information is coming at you fast. The Two of Pentacles is going to tell you that you are going to be playing a balancing game. You're going to all be pulled in a lot of different directions. And you are going to be struggling not to tip too far to one side or the other. Um, understanding that all of these ideas and information that is coming at you is going to be part of a bigger picture is going to be key to your survival. If you ignore it, if you ignore one half and let the scale tip to one side, you will come away with an incomplete picture that might lead you down a route you don't want to go. There is a lot of information coming your way. It's not going to be easy. But the Father of Wands tells you that you are just the right people for the job. You are made to handle what is coming your way. It's not to say it'll be easy, but you can do it. That's a good beginning of the campaign reading as well. So, Nedge, I don't know what lore you're about to drop in the next couple of sessions, but, uh, I think that the party is gonna at first be, like, chaotically flying around like a swarm of bees, and the goal is going to be settling down and figuring out how to parse through all that info. Yep. <laughs> if anybody else has anything, let me know. Uh, well, flying around chaotic is one thing. Flying around chaotic trying to figure out what to do with all the info they've been given is another. A lot of ideas. Also, I think balance is going to be key, especially for, uh, for Miss Clover, I think. Miss Clover and Miss Maeve, I think. Um, but let's see. I'm going to draw three cards for my paladin because I love her. She's also gotten the two of pentacles. I didn't shuffle very well, but the rest of this reading is unique. Cards I haven't seen this, this, uh, session. So we're going to read through it anyway. Because I think two of pentacles is, is pertinent to her character in general. Um... I have drawn the Six of Wands, the Two of Wands, and the Two of Pentacles. So, what was the Six of Wands again? Hang on. Okay. Um. That's a really weirdly optimistic reading for this character. Um. The Six of Wands and the Two of Wands both denote, like, a victory and a, like, a, a determination of direction. She's going to succeed at something, and then she's gonna- this is for Talora. Um, she's gonna succeed at something, and then she's gonna know where to go next. Um, and naturally, the Two of Pentacles, as I said before, is- is elements being balanced. I think at that point, that might be a warning to, like, not get too overzealous, as she has been known to do. Um, overzealous is kind of her middle name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sounding pretty optimistic, I would say. Um, I think, uh, from that... I think I kind of have a vibe on what I'm going to do with the, uh, the lady we just met. Um, but yeah. 
Anybody else want one? These don't have to be D&D related. Uh, okay, let's do one for New York's. I will be doing three cards unless prompted otherwise. One, two, three. All right. I have to I have to look one of these up, but I'm going to I'm going to do a very fast and loose one for this. Okay. I've drawn three cards, but I'm going to read them backwards. I'm going to read them in the opposite order that I drew them. The Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is a card of uh, security, but specifically in material goods. This is, you don't have to worry about money. You, you are not going to be worried about your, the things that you own. Now, that's what the card means by itself. I want you to keep that, I want, I want to put a pin in that. The Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is a period of contemplation. Again, being a Pentacles card, this is a card about the material. You have a lot to think about. We might have to make a decision moving forward that could be either difficult financially or could determine our financial straits. And then, of course, on the opposite side to the Nine of Pentacles, the thing that uh, lies on the other scale of uh, from financial stability and comfort is the Tower. A violent upheaval that causes you to feel like you've lost everything. Nedge... Right now, you stand at a crux with your character. I know that how you choose to respond to what has just happened in the campaign. Um, you are a character who's been going around disguised for a while, and you now might be threatened in that disguise. The disguise you have chosen might be causing you trouble. How you respond might, uh, might dictate your material safety. And that is where I would like to bring into account another aspect of the pentacles is that yes, the pentacles can, can deal with financial safety and your possessions, but they can also deal with your body. Stay safe. And that's your reading for Nurks. <laughs> Hi, hello, I rolled a six. A six! Oh my god! Luckily, the save was a five. You live. <laughs> it was a very low save. It was really just me kind of kind of vaguely swinging my arm in your direction. <laughs> but yes, that is that is your vibes for today. <laughs> But did anybody else like anything, anything red? Also, how are you doing, Multi? How is, how is life? I know you've been in Project Hell. Okay. Vibes for the remainder of the semester. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Let's see. 
Oh, that is that is totally understandable. You've had yesterday was exhausting. You exerted yourself a great deal. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> okay, this is... I want you to know I'm laughing because it's a good reading. Um, I just... I, it was just very, very apt. Um, so, okay, how do I... Is that swords? I think it's swords. Hang on. So... There are two cards that have uh, that have very similar meanings. Um, I've drawn the Nine of Wands, the Six of Swords, and Temperance. And I'm going to bring up Temperance last, because I think you're going to smile. The Nine of Wands is the end of an arduous journey. The Nine of Wands is the light at the end of the tunnel. It says that there are a lot of a lot of exertions you have left to make, but you can see the end. It's saying pick yourself up and keep moving because you're almost there. Hello. We're doing tarot readings. Um the 6 of swords means something very similar. It's hope at last. It's that things are going to get better. It's that you're in a dark place right now, but there is there is light light on the horizon. However, while the 9 of wands pushes you to keep working, the 6 of swords says the opposite. It is important to rest, revitalize and surround yourself with joyful friends. You have to balance the the work and your health. It's gonna be it's gonna be a wild balancing act, but both of those cards are telling you, hey, you're almost there. Ooh. <laughs> Hell yeah. Story stream sounds fun. And then, uh, last but not least, for you, Multi, I've drawn Temperance. And Temperance, of course, is a card of teamwork. Temperance is the card of energy from, from different sources that might not have ordinarily come together, working together to create success where there wouldn't be. Temperance is a card of things that you can't do alone, or... Things that you couldn't do as well alone. It's it's the value of working together. And I think that that is uh, very pertinent to your, to your situation right now. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a rough next like few weeks but keep your chin up, take care of yourself, keep moving forward, and keep working together. <laughs> You're gonna be okay. It is the card of fighting for your friends. It's the Ike card. <laughs> um, all right. So that's that's your reading. Would anybody else like one? Did I did I miss anything in chat? Hold on, let me let me scroll up to see if there's anybody else that would like one. Nobody else has said anything. Okay, feel free to while I am doing readings, if you have um, if you have inquiries or things that you would like, Barrett, would you like one? Oh man, you got whoa! You got in trouble at work. What'd you do? Let me let me do a reading for you, Mr. Zix. Hold on. Tell me about it while I while I shuffle. Everything wrong? No. I I hope you're okay. 
please be okay. Okay, um, am I reading for Zix? Let's see. Mr. Zix uh, has drawn... Hang on, these are all the same cards I just drew. You know what? Some of these are different. Let's let's keep them. Uh, so, I drew the Nine of Wands again, which, um, mean, again, means, like, you're gonna be able to, uh, you're gonna be able to get through this. You are gonna have to keep working to get out of it, but, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be okay. And then I drew the Mother of Swords and the Empress. Um, the Mother of Swords is somebody who is very, very sharp and perceptive. Uh, usually it is someone who... Hello! Um, usually it's someone who is, is very experienced in their field. Um, it could be somebody who, who has the life experience that you have gone through. Um, be warned, this person has the knowledge to help you out, but they also might be a bit of a bitch. Like, they're, they're usually somebody who, who has some, uh, some, like, cynicism to them, you know? Um, and, and might be a little bit sharp in their criticism. Um, so I guess, and I know you're good at dealing with people like that, Zix, so, like, it's just saying, like, somebody is probably gonna come to you and be like, hey, man, like, this, this wasn't good. And you're gonna just kind of have to, like, deal with their sharp words and, and just, you know, you'll, you'll be okay. You'll learn from it. And last but not least is the Empress. The Empress is one of my favorite Major Arcana cards. Um, yeah, the, the regional manager is probably gonna be scary. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, if the cards are being honest, uh, just listen up and, and be chill. They might, they might be, like, you know, they might be, they might be kind of, uh, kind of pissy. But just, like, be, be you. They will love you. It just might take a second, you know? <laughs> um, and, and the last card actually, the last card is one of my favorite of the Major Arcana because it, it says that actually. Um, this is the Empress. Um, the Empress is somebody who, who has a lot of warm and creative energy. Um, this is somebody who, you know, you're, you're probably not gonna really get into too many fights with. Um, it's, it's somebody who, their strength comes from compassion and gentleness, being able to navigate these these difficult people pretty, pretty easily. Um, and, and usually when you get this card in a reading, it's, it's saying to point, it, it's pointing to that side of yourself, you know? Um, so honestly, I think it's saying you're going to be okay. Um, you're probably going to have to, oh, see you honor. Hope you have a good dinner. Um, you're probably gonna have to, um, probably gonna have to deal with this, this encounter being a bit rough at first. But you are good with people, Zix. I know this about you. I think that, uh, your, your ability to, to handle people and your ability to listen is going to get you far. Um... You're gonna be fine. That's that's really what this is saying. Um, you know, hunker down, be perhaps a little bit humble. Uh, because these these the Empress is kind of a is kind of a gentler card. You know, maybe humble isn't the right word. Just like just like kind of kind of chill. You know, a little bit like not not necessarily chill and like don't have any excitement, but, like, you know, it's saying, you know, hey, if you stay level, you're gonna be good. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hold on. 
when I and let me let me scroll up in chat to see if I've missed anything. Ba -ba -ba -ba. You know, someday I might, someday I might do, do reading streams. I kind of want to do, um, I kind of want to do, like, ASMR. Like, just, like, softly, softly reading out shit or, or doing whatever. Uh, because I want to practice to do more edited content. Just to, like, get some lore out there, you know? I know lore is kind of a meme at this point, but, like, I want to do it anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah. Today we are doing we are doing divination. We are we are reading the future in the cards. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. I I am not like you know I'm not saying this is like set in stone. This is what's gonna happen. The cards are a mirror that kind of give you questions to ask yourself, things to things to ponder, things to go you know oh maybe I should see it this way or maybe I could look at it like this you know. Um, so if anybody would like a reading, I'm doing them for free. You don't have to pay points today, because today we're just, we're just chatting until Zix gets home. And then we're gonna go raid him. Um, I am gonna take a drink, actually, while I'm, while I'm waiting to see if anybody else wants a reading. Um, because I have, I have been talking for a bit without taking a drink. Uh... Oh, that feels way better. Mm. One more. <sighs> okay. Um. Let's see. What have we got? What have we got? Oh, no worries. If you don't have anything to ask, I can always just keep, like... Keep generally pulling for people. Um, if anybody, if anybody new would like just, uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to have a question. I'll do one for Rye. Let's see. And if any of the new folk who have come in would like one as well, let me know. Uh, do not hesitate to ask in the middle of a reading. I am kind of, like, trying to make a mental cue and, and just doing these real quick. Um, let's see. Ba 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 ba. Oh, I got a hair stuck in there. Okay. So Ryan, then Barrett. Okay. Uh, let's see. What is this card? Let me, let me double check that I know this one. Do 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 do. Okay. Um, I want to read these sequentially. Because I think they, I think they, get, again, make kind of a nice, uh, a nice story when you read them out. Um, I have drawn the Eight of Swords, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Chariot. So, the Eight of Swords starts out as not a very optimistic card. The Eight of Swords talks about a time in your life or you being in a time in your life uh, where you feel powerless and trapped. You don't know if you can make a move and if you do, you're kind of scared you're gonna cut yourself on an edge. You don't know if doing something might make things worse. The Seven of Pentacles kind of further lays into this understanding of you are in a period of deep contemplation. You're in this spot and you've got nothing to do but think. So you're thinking a lot. And the Seven of Pentacles does speak to the value of that thinking. Carefully calculating your next move is going to help when it comes down to it. 
But the last card that I have pulled for you is the Chariot. And the Chariot is a card... If you've ever heard the story of David and Goliath, that's what the Chariot is about. The Chariot is about insurmountable odds that you, you don't know if you can take down. But the Chariot is telling you, fight anyway. You will win. It's saying you might be scared to act right now. But you should act. Because even though the odds aren't in your favor, you can fight and claw and survive and you will be rewarded for it. It's one of my very favorite cards. It's telling you, you know, and, and it is in the last position, so it might be, it might be in the future. Right now, you might still be in that period of contemplation. But it is telling you, move forward and move forward with confidence. Because even though it seems right now like everything is shit, you will make it out. And you will make it out on top. And then Barrett, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, this is an interesting reading. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. So, first we have the Ace of Swords. And the Ace of Swords is a card of a sudden realization. Um, it's a card that... it It's usually an emotional realization, I would say. Because swords really have to do with powerful feelings. Um, however, the Ace of Swords alone is kind of a bad card to draw. Not, not bad in that, that it says something bad, but it's not very descriptive. It doesn't tell you what the realization is. It doesn't tell you if it's good or bad. It just says you're going to have one of those anime <gasps> moments, you know? <laughs> uh... So we're going to look next to the next uh, card in the reading, which is the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is uh, kind of a card of getting the fuck out of Dodge. Um, the Six of Wands is you've, you've been in a situation for a bit that you don't like for some reason. And the Six of Wands is finally telling you, hey... You've got an opening. Let's get out of here. You know, like, let's let's change something. And lastly, I don't know what to think of this last one, but uh, have you met anybody new, Barrett? Because uh, I've drawn the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is usually a card of romance. Um... You might be entering into... You might be entering into a, a, an entanglement soon. <laughs> you might be... You might be meeting somebody pretty cool. Or you might be entering into something... Something fun with somebody. Yeah. It doesn't... Now, the Two of Cups does not necessarily denote the depth of the relationship. Like, the lovers, I would definitely be like, Okay, you're gonna meet somebody who you're gonna hang around with for the rest of your life. The Two of Cups might just be you go on a fucking date. But it might be that you meet somebody who you're gonna hang out with for the rest of your life. All I know is it's gonna be saucy. 
<laughs> so, I don't know. All of these together? I don't know. Maybe you get hit with a very sudden and abrupt crush. I don't know. <laughs> It does sound scary. Usually love is scary. Love is very scary. But you know, it's it's pretty fun sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. Nedge can Nedge can definitely attest to that. Ned has, Ned has gone on an adventure for love and seems to be going okay. Okay, let's do a general pull for Porky. Yeah. I'm happy for you. It you know, you got to you got to just go for it. I have pulled two together. I don't usually So, when I pull cards and like two come out accidentally together, I tend to add them to the reading. Um and I tend to read them in tandem. So these these are going to be linked. This is technically going to be a four card. Um, let's see. So, let's see. What did these mean together? Oh, that's actually very interesting. The two cards that I have pulled together... Oh, I would 100% do readings for Butter and Sushi. Um, the two cards that I've pulled together are actually really freaky that I pulled them together because they both mean the same thing. At least very similar things. I've drawn the Seven of Cups and the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Cups is some kind of illusion or deception. It doesn't usually uh, it doesn't usually denote what kind or like because like an illusion or a deception it could be that you're lying to somebody or it could be that you're planning a surprise party you know like that's that's the nature of lies is like you might i don't know you might be planning a really cool encounter in a tabletop game and you just can't tell your players because it would ruin it you know that's the seven of cups too but like also telling a severe lie is also the seven of cups the seven of swords narrows it a little more the Seven of Swords doesn't necessarily say whether it's a good lie or a bad lie, but it does say that it's a lie that you or someone around you is telling for survival. There is something that it, it feels like it would be dangerous to tell. Whether it actually is dangerous, it's hard to say. But there are a lot of things that people keep to themselves for fear of maybe being judged, uh, maybe being shut out. Um, and I think that this card is saying that either you or someone near you is having one of those moments of like, do I, do I let this out? Maybe not yet. Um... And the next card I have pulled, which might give guidance on what to do on that, is the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups, uh, I think, speaks a little bit to, um, this might be being hidden, not necessarily from the people that are close, but it might be being hidden from people in a professional setting. Because the Four of Cups is definitely a card of, like, discontentment and greed. This, this might be something that it's like, if, I, if my boss knew this, I could lose my job. You know? Um, 
sometimes, you know, it, it, it might be one of those harsh things about, like, what to, what to tell where. Um, and it might be a card of, like, not necessarily keeping the secret out of choice. Um, however, I could also read this another way. I could also read this as something that the survival and the greed are being conflated. It might be it might be a lie that is being told to you or being told by you or someone near you. Um because of greed that someone is mistaking for survival. Like somebody might be like, "But I need my $10,000." You know, like I mean like maybe, but like it might be somebody who's doing okay and they're just, they're acting out of fear of losing the position that they have, you know? It, it could go, it could go a couple of different ways. Um, and lastly, I've drawn the Daughter of Wands. And the Daughter of Wands is... A person, it, it's usually a woman, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, usually this denotes, like, a feminine vibe. So it could be somebody of any, any gender persuasion, but they kind of more have, like, have more feminine traits, stereotypically speaking. And it's somebody who is visionary and passionate. She has a lot of ideas. This isn't somebody who's going to settle down and start a family. This is more somebody who is more career-minded and moving forward. That's not to say maybe never, but, like, at this point, she is she is moving and shaking, you know? Um, as a result of this, she might be, uh, she might be a person that is not good to get on the bad side of. Because she is, she is perhaps cutthroat. But if you have her on your side, it's a good ally. She'll defend you. Um, so what I'm getting from this is... And I don't know if the daughter is the one who is keeping the secret or if she's just involved. But I think if she's involved, she's the person you can tell. Or the person that who, whoever is keeping the secret can tell. Just that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Um, so I don't know if anything is coming to mind for you. And I feel like it's not good to really clarify being that it is a reading about secrets. You might not know. Or if you do know, it's probably not something that I should ask to tell. Um, but I think it's saying... That there's perhaps merit to the secret. Or there's an understanding of why it's being kept. And there might be somebody who's good to trust. It's a it's a difficult reading because a lot of these cards that I've drawn for this one for Porky don't have a direction. Like I, I I am not getting an understanding of like who is keeping the secret or like what like you know, what way it's going, you know? Okay, butter and sushi. Would you like me to draw one card for each of them? Or would you like me to draw three cards for each of them? I would do a big reading for cats. 100%. Like... Like, uh, I would do three cards for each, therefore six cards total, is what I mean, a big reading. I'll do, I'll do one for each, and then I'll do one in the center that's both of them. I'll do, I'll just do standard three card. Okay, we'll do butter on the left and sushi on the right. Butter, sushi, and then both of them. <laughs> S 
sushi is keeping secrets. I drew the six, I mean, I drew the seven of swords again. <laughs> sushi is keeping secrets. Um, the four of pentacles is what butter has drawn. The four of pentacles is, hang on, I don't know this one by heart. Okay, um, the four of pentacles is kind of a warning. Um, it's of being too possessive of the things that you own. Is Butter kind of like hoarding the toys? <laughs> because uh, I think uh, I think <laughs> it's like Butter is Butter is perhaps being greedy, <laughs> and Sushi Sushi might be secretly getting mad. <laughs> Um, and then the last card I've drawn for both of them is the Father of Swords, which is a really funny card to draw for cats because it's a card about critical analysis. It's like, this is a person who's like emotionally a bit distant and like always thinking. It's like, <laughs> your, your cats toast, your cats are having machinations that you're not aware of. Your, your cats, <laughs> your cats are <laughs> having like rich inner lives that you have not yet figured out. <laughs> there's, there's deception. <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> somebody is, somebody is, is keeping all the stuff from the other ones. Uh, the other one's keeping all the secrets and oh my God, so much trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Butter is trying to get all the love. <laughs> Ash does that to me too. Okay. Let's do Ty next. Ty is Ty is next in the order. And then and then Zix. <sighs> Excuse me. <sighs> Okay. Let's see. Um. Hmm. This has a lot of mixed emotions, I would say. It has some good and it has some bad. Um. I've drawn for you, Ty, the Two of Swords, the Seven of Wands, and the Moon. Uh, the Moon, I want to I wanna start with, actually. Because the Moon is the major arcana. It's kind of the big one. Um, and the moon, I think, has both good and bad connotations with it. The moon is another really powerful, like, intuitive card. But it's also a card that, like, makes you really think about your anxieties. Like, what are you worried about? What things, like, irrationally have, have been causing fear? Because usually, it's not... Oh, I'll get to that stretch in just a second. Um... But, uh, it's not usually a, um, like, a rational fear that's, like, brought about by something. It's usually, like, all of a sudden, I've got a bad feeling, you know? Um, usually the moon speaks to the fact of, like, not just intuition, because the high priestess is more of just, like, listening to your gut. The moon is more about these supernatural things that humans can detect without understanding why. It might speak to the importance of dreams, or it might speak to the importance of particular vibes you're getting about a situation. And it's saying those things have power. You know more than you think you do. And that might be relevant when we talk about the Two of Swords. The Two of Swords is a situation in which you feel kind of stuck something, and I'm not sure, it doesn't necessarily speak to how intensely you feel about this thing. It might be just something that you're feeling indecisive about and it's just kind of on the day-to-day. -day. Or it might, it might be something more like you feel kind of stuck in the direction of your life. The intensity could really be anything, but you, right now you feel like you are stuck. You're, you're trying to act, but no movement is happening. Or you feel like you take one step forward and 
then one step back. Not even necessarily two, it's not a setback, you're just where you started. But the Seven of Wands... I like to call this the Introvert's Joy card. The Seven of Wands is about the, the, like, the solace and the joy of standing alone. Um, that, I think, at least if I have understand, if, if I have understanding, you're spending a lot of time around people in your work, but, like, I'm sure you're spending a lot of time just, like, vibing with nature as well. Not really super, super surrounded by people. And I think this card is, is kind of telling you, like, hey, if you feel stuck in something, it's okay to just chill and vibe for a bit. Like, there's value in that. And it very much speaks to, like, the emotional gratification you get from that. Um, I think right now it's just saying, you know, where you are right now, it may not be big and dramatic, but it is beautiful. And, uh, kind of, kind of follow your vibes and, and really think about how you're feeling at any given moment. Because that is currently of immense importance. And that is for Mr. Ty. It's a good mental health reading, I think. Check in with yourself, you know? See how you're feeling. Don't worry too much about, like, the, the physical movements. Just kind of really, really take a bit to be with yourself. And now I'm going to stretch. I wish I unlocked arms so you could see me actually stretch. But I do not yet have arms. Okay, we've got about 20 minutes before Zix gets home, I think. Give or take. Maybe 25 hello, minutes. Darkness, oh, hello, hello, darkness. <laughs> I've come to talk with you again. <laughs> hello, darkness, but it's in a major key. That was your reading. <laughs> Just like very, very cheerful. Hello, darkness. You know, chill with the uncomfortable emotions. They will they will sometimes be very healing. That's what I would say. And I would I would put that advice forward not just to you, Ty, but I would put that advice forward to everybody in the chat. Check in with yourself. Do a little vibe check. How are you feeling? You know? Um take a bit to take a bit to take inventory of your mind. Don't necessarily ruminate, because ruminating is dangerous. Ruminating can get you stuck for years. Believe me, I've had it happen. But take a bit. Think about what your brain is calling for, you know? Ugh. Excuse me. Reading for me. Well, I did one earlier, but I'll do another. I, uh, I think I could use one. I think I have a, I think I have a subject in mind, but I'm going to be pretty, I'm going to be pretty vague and cagey about that. <laughs> These are all very similar cards to what I drew before. Six of Wands, Seven of Swords, Ten of Cups. Well, okay. <laughs> oh, did I do the extra one for Zix? I'll do that after this. Um, let's see. Six of Wands, so I need to get out of the situation I'm in. There's a secret. And I have a lot of friends. 
That doesn't help me. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real. <sighs> My secrets are being kept for important reasons. You see. <laughs> But I do appreciate that I have a lot of- I do- I appreciate that I have a lot of friends. Yes, I- I thought you- I thought you said me, so I didn't know if you wanted one. I- I- I was kind of just going off of- because you didn't- you didn't say anything else. So I just said, no, I'll add you to the pile. You want me to do one for Dizzy and Eris since I did one for, uh, Butters and Sushi? Or Butter and Sushi, sorry. I keep calling her Butters. Like, like the South Park butters. Okay, let's do, let's do Eris and Dizzy. <laughs> Five of Pentacles was the one I got for both of <laughs> them. They're fighting! <laughs> um... I guess this is- this is shit we already know. Eris likes to be by herself sometimes. I drew the Seven of Wands again. She's just- she- she wants to have me time. And then the Father of Wands for Dizzy. Dizzy's got so much going on in that empty head. He's got so many ideas, but the most important thing is that he's a very charming boy. Dizzy is a very charming boy. He's so handsome. Uh, I think this is saying he's gonna be the people person and Eris isn't. This is all shit we know. But the Five of Pentacles... The Five of Pentacles is like a- is like a- like a heartbreak and like a- and like a emotional matter that like like makes you lose something. They're are they are they are they upset at each other's sex? <laughs> or maybe they're pissed at you. <laughs> or maybe they're gonna break something. I don't know. I just, that's that's such a dark reading for cats. That's such a we haven't had that card come up at all. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. They're, they're siblings. You know, that's also something we know. The Five of Pentacles might just be another no duh card. They might just be like, oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be a little pissy today, and then they're gonna go back to normal. You know, like <laughs> God. What a weird reading. What a weird reading. <laughs> well, let's see. What else do we have? I don't think we have much more. Anybody else? We've got we've got like 20 minutes. Um, if we don't want to do readings, we could always just- we can also just chat about life. And like, how- how everybody's doing. If anybody has any thoughts on their reads or anything. Um. You know. I don't know. It might be somebody you don't even know yet. It might just be, it might be something you're gonna come across. Um, maybe it is someone you know. Who knows? The cards could be pushing you any which way. All I know is it's gonna it's gonna really like hit you like a ton of bricks with the ace of swords. You're gonna be like, whoa, that's that I didn't think about that before. Okay, interesting.
I suppose I'll just kind of, I'll just kind of vibe and do different readings, just like, as I think of them. I'm gonna do one for Mr. Ash. I'm just gonna pull one card for Mr. Ash, though. Daughter of Swords. Um, what does that fucking mean? Hang on. Daughter of Swords. Oh, never stops watching. Um, he's been obsessively watching my mom cook today. That's why. Uh, he's gonna be a little, he's gonna be a little, a little dingus for a while more. Damien, would you like a reading? Would you like to consult the cards? Okay. Let me give you three cards. Let me shuffle. One, two, three. Oh! Okay. Uh. Hmm. I don't know what to make of this together. So I'm gonna read them separately. I've drawn the Ace of Swords and a Cups card again. Uh, so you have a very similar, uh, you have a very similar reading to Barrett's, actually. But then I don't know what this last card means. Um, so, okay. I'll just, I'll just read them out. Every, I've gotten the Eight of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, and the Ace of Cups. Um, and the... Eight of Pentacles is one of my favorite cards, actually. Uh, the Eight of Card or the Eight of Pentacles is the card of the craftsman. It's somebody who is passionate in their field, and they work really hard to make what they are doing perfect. Um, it's it's a card that says, you know, you're you're working very hard, and it is paying off. Um. It's, I associate this card a lot with artists, and I know you are working very, very hard on, on your stream and your other, your other, like, pursuits in, in streaming-related things, and this is a wonderful card to be drawing for that, because it's saying you're working hard and it's gonna go well. Get hype. <laughs> um, the Ace of Swords, as I said for Barrett. It's kind of a weird card to be uh, to to draw alone because it's it's the card of the anime, <gasps> the the like the sudden realization that hits you like a bolt of lightning. The the like, what? That's that's impossible, you know, yada yada. Or I can I I also tend to associate it with strokes of wild inspiration, like when when you. And, and you've had a few of these. The kinds of ideas that make you get up and start pacing around your room like I can't stop thinking about this. Yeah, yeah. The Nani card. And the Ace of Cups is, again, very uh, saucy. <laughs> the Ace of Cups is uh, is the card of like... Oh, you met you you meet someone new and you've got like a, a a naive new interest. Specifically, the Ace of Cups is not a relationship that has been going on for a long time. The Ace of Cups is like specifically the naivety card of like you don't know what you're getting into, but like it's it's about it's about usually emotions or relationships. Uh, it's a, it's a very romantic card. Um, however, if it is not, if it is not about a person, it could be, it could be some new venture that is, like, so fucking exciting that you're not even thinking about, like, where it's going. You're just like, wah! It's, 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 whoa! You know? You're getting, you're getting swept up in the emotion. So, 
all in all, I'm getting the vibe of a mad scientist fr frantically prancing around with this reading. Which is honestly such a mood. <laughs> And that is what I have drawn for you. <laughs> You've got so many new ideas, it's so exciting. Some of them may not be thought through fully enough. <laughs> but you're doing good. You're working hard. You know, it's it's... It's that kind of vibe. That's the Eight of Pentacles for you. Uh, what else? What else? I think... I don't know. Have I done one for everybody here? If any lurkers would like one. I don't know if anybody is, is just chilling and listening. But please, by all means. Um, what else has been going on in the life of Loon? Hmm. I'm looking forward to next year starting the Odyssey through the entire Dark Souls franchise. I think I did at least one for everybody, you're right. So, by all means, don't feel guilty if you would like to double dip. But if not, I'm just gonna try to think of things to talk about. Um. But yeah, next year, next year I have a lot of, I have a lot of goals, and the scariest one is that I want to get through the entire Dark Souls franchise. Unfortunately, Bloodborne accepting, because I do not have the console to play Bloodborne. And they have not made a PC port. But if they do, it's getting added to the list. Um, I will also be doing Eldon Ring and, uh, and, uh, Sekiro. Yes, I re I remember. <laughs> Post that in the Discord, please, Multi, so everybody can see it. Uh, a group anime watch. Oh, for Megas Bride? I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe. I don't know how I'm gonna watch it, but I would love to. That that will be that will be a great time. Uh, your required reading is is Megas Bride uh fucking good show <laughs> for any anime oh well i mean i'm down for for watching stuff in the discord if you guys want um i i need to figure out how we're gonna get them all but you know we'll figure it out i would like to do movie dates that would be fun i don't know strictly how legal it is but you know Hold on, I'm going over. It's a good boy. It's a good boy. Ah! Love him. Love him so much. I don't know what Zix is doing today. Is he doing more Ori? I think he's doing more Ori. And the will of the wisps. I don't know when he's going live, but when he is, we'll raid him. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Um, I'm gonna try to be putting out more more edited content. Um, like I said, I want to. Um, like I said, I want to do like. ASMR streams because I want to practice with my mic because I want to start doing things with a narrative on my YouTube channel. No, no, not for you, Rai. Not for you, Rai. For me, I'm going to be doing the edited content. 
I, I'm going to try to put together a series of not necessarily just like lore story time videos, but like I, I'm going to try to do like scenario ASMRs that link together into a greater narrative. Um, so I'm hoping that that I, I'm still kind of s script writing for that, but, uh, I, I have some good ideas that I'm, I'm hoping to put together in 2023. Um, I also am maybe thinking about doing some, uh, some like standalone content, like that isn't, uh, that isn't from a stream, you know? Um, I'm thinking about doing like some, some just yammering about things I like. I, I want to make I'm begging you to watch Dimension High the video. That's gonna take a while though, because I I don't know how to put that together. Um Oh your highlights are wonderful. No. Please. Your highlights are amazing, and I'm going to keep putting those up on the YouTube channel as well. No, please don't don't feel like I'm I'm not snubbing that. I'm saying this too, please. Like, these are these are just like I'm talking about potential potential things for the new year. No, your your highlights are amazing. Please don't. Yeah. We didn't see hide nor hair of the fool this entire day, and then I turned over my deck and there he was. <laughs> Shut up. Don't insult my friend, Damien. I'll fight you. How dare you. <laughs> Our soul is forfeit. God. You ever just want to? You ever just want to just kiss Talos and Jaffe? I know that's a very- that's an emotion that might be very specific to me, but I constantly want to kiss Talos and Jaffe. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. Uh, you're- are you gonna be a while? You okay? I guess I'll keep talking about how I want to kiss Talos and Jaffe. Uh, okay, maybe five minutes. Okay, take take time. I think. It's it's kind of sus. What? I I I mean, keep me updated, please. Keep me updated. Oh my god, okay, I'm sorry. This is gonna be excluding a couple of people because this is crit roll blabber, but the Mighty Nine Reunited is amazing, but how fucking dare they do an Okotoa plot without Caduceus Clay. I hate them. <laughs> no. I'm I'm so happy that, that Talison is getting to play Kingsley. I think I think that's great. But how fucking dare they exclude my boy? The, the guy who was very fucking invested in the Yukatoa plot earlier in the fucking season. It was just, oh, we're gonna finish this fight without you. What? Bitch? No. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's my vibes on Crit Roll lately. <laughs> um, trying to think of what else to talk about. And if anybody has any any readings, please do not hesitate to interrupt me and be like, hey, do this. 
Um, but yeah. What else is going on in the new year? I am. I am. I am gonna be... Hopefully, I'm gonna try to set goals for, like, maintaining my socials at a reasonable rate. Um, what I hope to do is I hope to start doing photo shoots in VR. Um, and posting, like, things to my Instagram as though my, my model is living the life that I, I want to live. <laughs> I went to a ramen shop. Here I am in, in VR chat ramen shop. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, if anybody wants to join in on shenanigans, please, please come to our Discord. Dude, you could also be a part of this. If anybody wants to come in when I'm doing photo shoots, I'm not going to be doing them live on stream, but I will probably be, um, I will probably be, like, inviting people to come along. For at least some of them. Uh, I will be asking for... I will be asking for a modicum of order. Because sometimes I'm going to want certain people in the shot. Sometimes I'm going to want, you know... So on and so forth. Yes! Come to the Discord for the bonfire lit cat! <laughs> but yeah. I want to do more VR stuff. Because I got my... Uh, I got my... I got, I got a headset for my birthday. And... I didn't use it much yet. I wanted to do more streams, but I haven't I haven't organized how to get chat in VR yet, and so like occasionally is all I ask for, Damien. <laughs> I I love your brand of chaos. So you are you are more than welcome to cause it. No man's sky VR with my sense of direction? Oh my god. I'll tell you what I I would consider giving it a shot, but we're doing uh, we're doing super hot first. Oh yeah yeah, by all means I would love to. Yeah, just uh just hit me up. I should be eating during Zix's stream, so yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so we'll work that out tonight. Maybe this weekend I'll do a VR stream then. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh. Yo! That would be sick. I still need to, um, so my model's physics don't work in VR yet. I need to, I need to find somebody who knows how rigging so I can, uh, so I can have hair in VR, you know? I want to be, I want people to be able to wiggle around my anglerfish lure. Also, I've learned I have an immense sense of phantom touch, which is not surprising considering I my brain loves ASMR so much. I... If I have learned one thing, it's when people touch me in VR, I get the fucking tingles like crazy. It's wild. I I may do a stream talking about how weird that is sometime. And and going around poking you guys to see if any of you guys feel it too. Oh man. I I'm going to be real. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do keep talking and nobody explodes, but Those are those are great picks for your for your character defining games. I love it. It 
If I ever do keep talking and nobody explodes, it's gonna be one of those things where it's like I set a chat goal and I say, beg. <laughs> you know? I I would much appreciate it. <laughs> Rai, if you keep adding titles, it'll get you everywhere. <laughs> Oh man, that that's got to help. Honestly, having the physical manual probably is a huge deal. That would be that would be really nice. Let's see. Is Mr. Zix home yet? No, he said 5 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I will say Ojo-sama is my favorite. <laughs> I, I very much appreciate being called Ojo-sama. Uh, closely followed by Goshijin-sama. <laughs> because I'll, I'll take either one. <laughs> I'm not picky. Followed, followed then by mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry. <laughs> it is a fine line. You're right. The sorry is unfortunately required in my presence. <laughs> Oh? What have you found? Tell me more. Hit me with some spreadsheets. Oh, I know, right? A good pair of heels turns anyone. <laughs> yeah! Ah. Oh, I'm getting some combat boots for Christmas this year. I'm just... I'm really... But, like, they're not... They're not, like... They're not, like practical combat boots. They have rhinestones on them. Because I'm a bitch. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, yeah, from Torrid. It's, uh, I I've told you before, I'm, I'm a, a huge slut for Betsy Johnson. Uh, I, I bought the, the boots that I was looking at before. Yeah. I'm gonna be that bitch. I still haven't worn my docks out either. I'm sorry, this is all very immersion breaking. With what feet? I know you're asking. They fit on the ends of the tentacles, you see. Oh, Zix is live. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap things up then. But first of all, I need to just for a second appreciate the YouTube algorithm for <laughs> I just Why? <laughs> really we just need to we just need to be cashing in on Gen Z memes. That's that's how we're gonna make our our make our lives in uh how we're gonna make our lives in this streaming world. Aw <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Torrid is amazing. They have the most comfortable clothes. Like sometimes they're overpriced, but they they make the most comfy shit ever. 
and I've never I've never been to a store otherwise that sells things that are both pretty and comfy. Like, okay, lace is usually the devil. Like, lace usually feels like a thousand tiny pieces of glass digging into your skin. But the fucking lace they use at Torrid, I'm like, whoa, this this feels soft and luxurious. This is new. Um, I could just live in this. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I want to cover before we go? Yeah. It's so nice. And I never find good lace. It's always, it, like, everywhere else it feels horrible. I'm like, why? How could something that looks so nice feel so bad? Like, they got it right. They've, they've cracked the science. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think I have anything else I want to cover today. Um, Friday, I don't know if I'm doing Hollow Knight. I think I'm going to do Hollow Knight. I, I still haven't fully planned out. I think we're going to do more Hollow Knight on Friday. And then, I think, I don't know if we're streaming Saturday. But if we are, I might try to do, I might try to do VR stuff. We'll, we'll give it a, we'll give it a swing and see what's up. So... Until then, I'm going to send you off to give Zix some love. Uh, tell him he's amazing and just the best. Uh, that's, that's your raid message. I know, I know you guys were going to go over there anyway, but, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have a raid message anyway. I will see you after stream, Damien. And, uh, yeah, let me, let me set up the raid. Uh, ba -ba -ba, raid, Mr... Six. Up, up, up. And I believe that's all I have to cover today. I hope you guys all enjoyed your readings. I hope I could throw a little bit of magic into your holiday. Um, thank you guys all for always showing up. I, I love you all. Uh, if this is a holiday about gratitude, uh, everything I'm grateful for is right here with me right now. <laughs> so, let's go and, let's go and spread some love to Zix. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, have a good one, mortals. Ash is here. And I will see you, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye! <laughs>